Happy Monday to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. Of course, it is time for us to track the tropics. Good evening, Florida sky watchers. So that's the chorus right now that we're hearing in regards to the new system that's developing in the tropical Atlantic and also in the Caribbean. I made a video about this a couple weeks back. Uh, about 13 days ago, I've got it queued up, and we basically witnessed the exact same thing happening right before the formation of Hurricane Milton. And here we go. I'm going to show you this sequence over the past, I don't know, probably like 36 hours or so. Um, and then I'm going to analyze this. So here you actually can see the cyclogenesis, we'll speed this up a little bit, and then when I analyze it, I'll slow it down. So here you go, gravity waves out here, and then you've got um, some cumulonimbus clouds that are created, and then you have cyclogenesis. You know that you already have cyclogenesis prior to this, aside from all of the cloud seeding that's happening into the system, along with this massive energy pulse that moves across the Caribbean, you could actually see these energy waves as they do. That's actually called gravity waves, and then you have this eruption of these cumulonimbus clouds. And then you also have massive cloud seeding into this system, and then cyclogenesis. You can go back and look at that at any time, it's on YouTube. And here is the GOES True Color satellite imagery for the Caribbean, very similar to what we were just watching, only 13 days apart. And there you see that same exact scenario playing out. You have this system kind of getting Basically, the system achieving this cyclogenesis, you have this scintillation out over the Caribbean. And when I say scintillation, right there, it's a veil of um, thin cirrus clouds. And it is causing evaporation over the ocean. So all this commentary in regards to the ocean temperature being warm, I mean, that's not necessarily that's not deniable but basically what we are seeing here is convection and from a veil of cirrus clouds right there that basically is causing these cumulonimbus clouds to form almost instantaneously and they're doing it in these perfectly straight lines. You see that? Now those are cumulonimbus clouds and this is how they look from satellite. This is actually a cumulonimbus cloud complex. And see how that erupts, feeding moisture. And then you have this much more broad cyclonic movement that is starting to move through the Caribbean Sea. So you see that. So you see it starts very small and then it grows much larger to encompass almost the entire Caribbean Sea. And it, it might not be surprised if tomorrow we see a much more defined cyclonic movement. But now I remember seeing this for the first time and um, you know there, there, there were some very interesting anomalies about it. But another anomaly about this is that the elevation at which it's happening is specifically at this 250 HPA, which is a, which is a uh, altitude. It's based on pressure and temperature. And so this is around 38,000 feet. It's not happening at any other elevation. And we can pretty much scan through it. And so what you are seeing 
is the cyclogenesis that is basically occurring at the same elevation that airplanes fly. And so here you could see the, the beginning of it. It's pretty much right there. Uh, there, non-existent. And this was two days ago. And now it's here, just below the Dominican Republic and Haiti. So we could go back to this. And I'd been trying to pull up the infrared and for some reason it's just not available for um, the Caribbean today and here you can get a another perspective of this through the infrared And here you can see these other systems that are kind of developing quickly and feeding moisture into, back into the sea. And this was a violent storm today. Panama, um, Venezuela, Colombia, all in that area um, of South America and Central America. Now, I particularly liked the cirrus view because now you can see the clouds forming much more clearly. And these, what look like blasts through the atmosphere. Almost like picking up a handful of um, pebbles and kind of throwing them into the, a, 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 a lake. Look at that. All at the same time with this cyclogenesis creates this momentum and then eventually um, you potentially have this tropical storm or even hurricane and that's exactly what we saw in the build up to Milton. So I'm going to stop this there. I wanted to document this as always, capture as much of this as we possibly can while we can. And you no, know, I didn't even actually look in the Western Caribbean, but you see more of this, what I'm calling ocean evaporation, ocean heating by creating convection currents out over the ocean with this thin veil of cirrus. What you do is you accelerate evaporation over the ocean. And that is what I think is being done. Here is the eastern or western Caribbean, and now you, you'll see this a lot more clearly here out off of the coast of Honduras. So here is that scintillation. And look at how it becomes like a, a, a feeder band for this storm. And another interesting thing, on a side note, um, I was looking into all these different Air Force, U.S. Air Force installations all over the globe, uh, specifically throughout Central America and Mexico. I was attempting to do some research on the radar systems that they're using in these areas. And one of the interesting things that I discovered was about the illustrious history of the use of the Air Force Base in Honduras by the United States government. If you remember, in 1954, there was uh, the CIA basically overthrew 
and assassinated a democratically elected um, president of Guatemala. And it was on behalf of the United Fruit Company and all of the staging was done in Honduras at this Air Force base or military base um, there. So it has a, an illustrious history. It also has a history of when we were at war in Nicaragua and the whole um, Sandestas. And so anyway, obviously looking at Honduras, um, as a potential area for covert military uh, and clandestine military operations, it has been ongoing for the past 75 years there. So I figured I would just kind of highlight that, make a note of it, and obviously um, speak about it a little bit because I have known about the history of the CIA overthrowing governments, but I had not known, um, you know, of how it was done. So interestingly, we're seeing a lot of hole punch clouds out here too. You have one here, you have one here, watch this. Watch those hole punch clouds forming. And a lot of radio frequency there. Check this one out here. That's a hole punch cloud. Of course, that's just created by the um, condensation superheating the atmosphere and causing all of that moisture to fall out of the sky. Of course, it's just condensation. So I'm going to stop it there and hopefully I'll get this video posted. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I am serving a serious timeout right now by Facebook 75 days. I am not able to post any pictures or video. Um, and so this entire time I'd been doing it from my personal Facebook page, if you haven't noticed. Um, so it's at the end of the video. If you watch this entire thing, now you know I've blown my own cover. And if not, that's fine. I'll continue to remain anonymous as Florida Sky Watchers. Thank you. We do still have that next name on the list, which is Nadine, and we could have Nadine forming over the next week. We could actually have Nadine and Oscar with now not one, but two areas of concern being monitored across the Atlantic Basin. So let's check those out. Here is the first area we're concerned about that does have a much higher chance for tropical cyclone development. And this is going to be Invest 94L kind of sitting in the middle of the Atlantic. Doesn't look like much now. It's in some very dry air, but as it pushes west, it's going to move into a more favorable environment for development and the water tips are still toasty out there. So it's going to bump up to a 60% shot to turn into a tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane, likely over the next two to seven days. Hi everyone, I'm meteorologist Valerie Mills. Thanks for logging on to my Fox Hurricane. We are tracking a system out in the Atlantic Basin, just one lone tropical wave, and the next name on our Atlantic season list, list would be Nadine. We have not yet seen that form, but we are watching what is called right now Invest 94L. This is several hundred miles west of the Cabo Verde Islands, but this is an area that at this point has a 50% chance to develop in the next seven days. 
And so this is going to be the area that we're closely watching as it's moving in the general direction that we'll be keeping close tabs on this. And this is kind of the area that we're watching right now, which doesn't look too impressive. But what we are seeing is kind of this broad area of low pressure, this broad rotation. And if some thunderstorms can get a little bit more organized around the center, then we may be talking about something trying to form and take the name Nadine. Now we've seen a lot of stuff circulating social media about Nadine already forming. That is not the case. But if this develops, it would be called uh, Nadine. If it's able the to Atlantic Basin. Now there are two areas of development, potential development, Invest 94L, and there's another area in the far western Caribbean that has a low chance of developing. And the next names on deck, you saw Nadine and also Oscar. Here's a broad perspective of the Atlantic Basin overall. Looks pretty quiet, especially quieter than it was just about seven to 10 days ago when we were just screaming with activity. But what we're gonna hone in on here is this little cluster or flare up of convection or thunderstorm activity and that is Invest 94L. Not much to it right now. In fact, the next 48 hours only has a 10% development chance. 